He had chronic diarrhea, which was said to be fetid beyond all conception. I'm Acadia Einstein, and this is Strangeful Things. Unsolved, unresolved, and super complicated. Things. <laughs> okay, so here we are again. It's a me, Acadia, here with a Mel's and a Shoey in an Italian accent that makes a no sense because the guy we're about to talk to is French. How's it going, you guys? <laughs> going good, going good. I received a book that I have been wanting um, via the Postal Service from Barnes & Noble. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> it's Christmas Memories 2019. <laughs> <laughs> it's this really cool like special edition Stephen King that has Carrie, The Shining, and Salem's Lot all in one book together. Oh, very neat. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm super excited. I'm glad that it finally got here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yay for the Postal Service. Fucking A right. Huzzah. What do you got, Chewy? All right, I don't want to bring the mood down. <laughs> I'm, not, the- I'm, not gonna, I'm not doing something depressing or anything like that. It's just today happens to be the four-year anniversary of the day my dad passed. Aw, Chewy. I just wanted to say that. I'm doing this episode in honor of him. Okay. Even though this is a completely gross episode. Yes. Could have picked one not about <laughs> diarrhea. So that <laughs> just remember that everything in this episode is the uh, the opposite of Shuey's dad. Yeah. Exactly. He was a good man. Yes, he was. <laughs> he was indeed. Well, I am extraordinarily well rested. Because since we couldn't go to London for our anniversary because Americans aren't allowed to go outside, we got a new mattress nice. for the first time in our entire time together. What? Congratulations. Yep. And it was a hand-me-down mattress that we got. And we were just like, well, this is just the mattress that we have, so whatever you can't do anything about it it's a mattress you might as well just try to buy a new foundation for you never really occurred to us like every once in a while we talk about it and then be like nah but then we decided you never thought about getting a new mattress nope no because there was no the the it it didn't matter it wasn't the bed's fault you know what i mean yeah, but it doesn't help. Like, you can get ones that help, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I will find out because it's only been <laughs> it's only been since Sunday. Uh, yeah. But it's one of those Tempur-Pedic ones. I figured, well, fuck it. If, if I'm going to be ruined anyway, I might as well be able to sleep well. <laughs> and if they come to repossess it, nice try, suckers. No one's going to want this now. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so that's my big story for the week nice well congratulations on the new mattress thank you and now in honor in honor of your dad <laughs> here we go with the show now i don't know how many of you guys hang around on the strangeful things website looking at the stats i would say not many of you but <laughs> if you oh, ever do on. Yeah, you're right. It's my homepage. Uh, we have a website. You fucking no. asshole. Um, the the you're reason that he said that is because just before the out. just before the fucking show, he goes, "We have a Facebook." Her. <laughs> you know, we should put this on the internet. Huh? <laughs> you guys heard about this thing? <laughs> the podcasts are all the rage. <laughs> Your blogs are next. <laughs> yes. Fucking... <laughs> Jesus Christ. So on the site, we have tags for the episodes. And we always say where it took place in case people are interested in a particular location. Like you can click on New York or, or California or whatever. But we also do what kind of story it is. 
Like if it's a disappearance, then the tag is poof. And if then there's one for bloody murder and stuff like that. But this week's episode is not like anything we have seen before. Because this guy, he's he's something. So is that why you didn't even tell us that you were working on this script? Yeah, because uh, usually if you're working on something, you never shut up about it because it goes all <laughs> along with you yelling at us for being freaking lazy. Well, I didn't want to say anything because I would have felt bad waking you lazy fuckers up. <laughs> oh, you're a dick. <laughs> Plus, this is just a quick thing. And when we're done telling the story, we can share personal anecdotes to pad things out if we need to. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure how much of this guy I can take. Well, that scares me because if you can't take it, then we don't have a fucking snowball's oh. chance in hell. I mean, you're the one that wants to make a musical out of the Franklin cover-up, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Not the whole thing, just some parts. But this is different, because while there are mixed-up-in-a-blender baby shakes in Franklin cover-up, by the way, this is foreshadowing, because there really are. And for some reason, I just opened up the book again today, so it's coming. Anyway... There was not a person in the Franklin cover-up story that was very willing to drink that baby milkshake. But, and I don't mean a small milkshake. I mean a milkshake made out of a baby. Yeah. Anyway, if the subject of our story had been around for that particular party, it might have been a very different story. We have talked about autosarcophagy before, which is, as we know, eating yourself. But tonight, we're going to talk about polyphagia, which is... Okay. <clears throat> Polyphagia, also known as hyperphagia, is the medical term for excessive or extreme hunger. It's different than having an increased appetite after exercise or other physical activity. While your hunger level will return to normal after eating in those cases, polyphagia won't go away if you eat more food. So if you're super hungry all the time and it's now... You can just eat an entire bag of Oreos at one sitting. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, wait, is it a bag? The fuck do Oreos come in? Is it a box? No. Like, no. I mean, it's a bag, a... but there's, it's got a hard bottom, which makes it more like a it's box. It's a tray. It's a tray it's that a, they're in. It's a tray in the, encased in the bag, and now it has this the self-seal flap on the top. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Of course, well, 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 you know saying. all about the flaps. <laughs> well, I know all about not being able to stop eating. <laughs> he, he eats a bunch of Oreos and then closes the flap. Keep on flapping, little Oreos. <laughs> Keep on flapping, little Oreos. I'll be here for you tomorrow. <laughs> and by Don't tomorrow, worry, I mean... I'll be back. I mean, yes. 10 minutes. <laughs> Well, in, okay. in my experience with Oreos, the little like flavor flap is just like <laughs> not even necessary because when I do seal it and put it to the side, just like you're saying, I automatically pick it back up and then I get pissed yep. because I have to rip the top oh, yeah. off of it again. Yep. <laughs> and then the ones on the side are like, you can't get at these, right? <laughs> you oh, gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta push them. Yeah, you gotta reach over the little hump to pull them into the middle. <laughs> yeah, fuck those Oreo wrappers. Ugh. Oh. Anyway, so you can eat a whole thing of Oreos, which, by the way, little known Oreo fact, they were a ripoff of Hydrox cookies and not the other way around. So I've never heard of Hydrox cookies, so. Oh, well, then you weren't poor enough then. Oh, no. <laughs> oh wow. Whoa, this is the first time. Yep, this is the this first, is the first time. time. They were generic Oreos that when you dunked them, they would not absorb milk. And they sank. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's their, like, but they were first. Oreos are yeah. the ripoff. Anyway, you could also eat a bologna sandwich with a bunch of potato chip chips stuffed in it. Or you could eat <laughs> ice cream with so much whipped cream from that spray can that the first few bites oh, are nothing yeah. but whipped cream. Ready whip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, these things are sounding really specific. Is there anything you're looking to tell us? <laughs> I'm empty inside. No, uh, nothing. We knew that. They were, they were completely yeah, random funny. examples. Anyway, you can eat lots of stuff like that now. But what if it was 1772? Because that's when the subject of our story was born near Lyon, France. ta ra -ray, oh. Which is how you have to say it which is all we know of his name. So he's, it's just Terare. So he's like Prince or Cher. <laughs> right. 
Nobody knows if it was his real name or his nickname. But I can't imagine anyone giving a new, like a newborn, a nickname. So I'm going to say that when he <laughs> shot out of his mom, they all yelled "Terrare!" and it's <laughs> like "Hooray!" But they messed yeah, it up. Yeah, exactly. Like, but it was Terrare! for some reason. <laughs> Even as a kid, he could never get enough food. He ate and ate and ate and ate and never gained any weight. He was like Jughead, but evil. Actually, is Jughead <laughs> a bad guy on Riverdale? That would be pretty cool. No, like I've never seen Riverdale. Did He's you guys watch a, it? I. I have watched it in the past, and yeah. Jughead is not a bad guy. He is a journalist. Oh. oh. <laughs> Does he eat lots of hamburgers? He Well, the funny thing is, yeah, like, they put food in front of him all the time, but you don't actually see a lot of shots of him just, like, grossly eating like you did in the comics. Yeah. I don't have any examples of stuff that Tarare ate. Tarare when he was a kid, other than one quarter of a cow that he ate in one day. <gasps> but I did find something. Ew, wait, raw? Yeah, he he wasn't much for cooking stuff. Ew. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this gets way better, Mel's. Don't worry. Oh, great. Now, <laughs> I found something on my new favorite web page. The Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine by George M. Gould, M.D., and Walter L. Pyle, M.D., from 1898. They have a section in the book, which is now one of the pillars of the Strangeful Things Research Department, about <laughs> perverted appetites and include the following. Fulton mentions a girl of six who exhibited a marked taste for feeding on slugs, beetles, <sighs> cockroaches, spiders, and repulsive insects. Oof. This child had been carefully brought up and was one of 13 children, none of whom displayed any depravity of appetite. The child was of good disposition and slightly below the normal mental standard for her age. At the age of 14, her appetite became normal. Oof, that's great. A uh, kid who eats bugs. <laughs> well, do or did you guys as kids eat bugs? Well, mine's only four, so he hasn't, that I know of, eaten a bug yet. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, you know my kids of. did not. I did. <laughs> Shoo my, my My children did not. You did? Why? Did you what read kind of How bugs? to Eat Fried Worms and try it? I was just a dare thing when I was a kid. Oh, well, what that kind doesn't of bug count. Was? Yeah, what kind of bug? It's just like a worm. It's just a worm. Oh, that doesn't count. It wasn't count. like I, I was... ate. Oh, oh no, oh. it wasn't like I was doing it all the time. No, no, no. Like oh. cereal. Pour some dunk some dunk them in milk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's for lunch today? Worms again? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. Oof. Okay. I also want to include this other quote from that section. Damador tells of persons who went into slaughterhouses and waste places to dispute with wolves for the most revolting carrion. It is also mentioned that patients in hospitals have been detecting, detected in drinking the blood of patients <sighs> after venisections. <laughs> and in other instances, frequenting dead houses and sucking the blood of the recently deceased. <laughs> Ugh, Dussal quotes the case of a caloric girl of 14 who eagerly drank human blood. She preferred that flowing fresh from a recent wound. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, thanks for having that's, me read that section. That's disgusting. Delicious. Oh, just imagine how great it must have been to be like, oh, I'm going to do research for my medical book now. I need to find the grossest person in every town. <laughs> <laughs> and just write down what they do. That's what do you stuff. guys got? What do you got? I got somebody that throws rocks at their own face. <laughs> <laughs> so this gets us to 14. And according to what we know of Terare, he was thrown out of the house as a teenager because his parents couldn't afford to feed him. And at the oh, age God. of 17, he was slim and average height, so he was like Jughead, weighing no more than 100 pounds. No word on whether he was drinking blood or eating slugs, though. I should point out that apparently he was fond of snake meat. Oh, God. 
However, based on what we're going to learn, he was probably eating like actual buckets and drinking small streams. See, since he got kicked out, he fell in with a band of traveling jerks. They were thieves <laughs> and sex workers, but they also did a sort of a show. A circus? Now his part of it, huh? A circus? We're the traveling Kinda, jerks. Except, they, except if the circus just <laughs> robbed you <laughs> and gave you a hand job, I guess. I don't know. There might be some circuses like that. <laughs> yeah. You don't know. Oh, boy, they're coming back around. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> So now his part of the show was, to big surprise, eat things. Among the stuff he swallowed were corks, stones, live animals, and a whole basket full of apples. Now, we'll get to the live animal part, which is particularly delicious. But let's suffice to say that if a show had a guy who ate corks and it came to town, I'm not 100% sure what the headline act would need to be to make me more sold on attending. <laughs> <laughs> Step right up and watch this fucking guy eat all sorts of crazy shit. <laughs> As one could imagine, this act was too big for simple French peasants, so they made their way to the big time in gay Paris. Any <laughs> questions so far? No, oh. that's gross. I don't think I'd want to see any kind of sideshow attraction like that. There was a guy, we went to one, and this was right before everyone went, what the hell are we doing? Those can't be allowed. And uh, notorious wife beater and murder victim, the lobster man, was at the sideshow, along with the human blockhead and a guy who ate light bulbs. So, oh, yeah. my gosh. Mm-hmm. And this was in modern times, so... Light bulbs are delicious, though. <laughs> yes. But they're not the same since they've gone to it. LEDs. Yeah, I know. LEDs <laughs> aren't the same. It's like LEDs are like the pomegranate of light bulbs. Like, they're Aww. picking out little little lights. Oh. <laughs> Plus, the light bulb on LEDs, are, I think, feel more plastic than those old-timey light bulbs. Yeah. Yeah. Some good glass in ya. <laughs> <laughs> Just get one of those big fluorescent tubes and bite it from the side. Like right <laughs> <in> the <middle. laughs> Do it like an ear of corn. Like a corn on the <laughs> 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 That's right, Mel's. You gotta go all the way around. You can't break it. Like you can't break it in the middle. You gotta, you gotta nibble. <laughs> so now Let's talk a little bit about what Terrari looked like, since I'm not sure what you're picturing other than Jughead. Let's make sure we understand what sort of shambling horror this kid was. Now, all this comes from old medical books, and I'm not so naive to think that doctors would not lie their asses off to sell medical books. But the accounts apparently come from more than one resource, so maybe we should believe it. Yeah, but how many medical bookstores could there have been in the 70s? 1790s or any yeah. bookstore for that matter it's not like many people have to worry about having too many medical books filled with the same horseshit stories <laughs> <That's true. laughs> like maybe oxford had three <laughs> but i'm not going to have terare or the medically important descriptions of his person disparaged by the likes of you <laughs> your objection has been noted now on to his hideous yeah. body. You might ask yourself how long it takes a person to, to eat a whole basket of apples. <laughs> how long does it take? <laughs> What's the fastest ever anyone ever ate an apple, Mel's? Okay. According to a very fishy looking website, the record was set by someone named Isaac H. D. That's hyphenated H hyphen D <laughs> in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. On February 15th, 2014, who ate an apple in 38.1 seconds. Wow. Like, honestly, I feel guilty even relaying this information because the whole site seems shady. And I think it's just the record because he's the only one who's ever done that shit. Yeah. I also think that everyone that had to look at that got a virus. But (laughs) on that page... Now that's now I understand why you guys have Max. <laughs> so you can so you can do research on the stupid ass sites that we have to go to to get this information. See? Exactly. 
There was another guy who had a YouTube link who claimed to do it faster, but the video was private and some new dude named Garrett, obviously a scholar, commented, dude, nice, super awesome. I'm super excited for you, you gay piece of shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yay. So, this internet. doesn't really feel like the Guinness Book of Records or anything like that, but it came up first in Google, so there you have it. We're going to assume it takes 39 seconds to eat an apple, core and all. Ew, core and all. Oh, that's oh. so freaking gross. <laughs> I, I can feel it stuck in there. Ugh. Isaac <laughs> ate the core, and Terare ate corks for fuck's sake. Plus, the 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 Garrett guy that was made the nasty comment wasn't talking about Isaac. He was talking about the guy with the YouTube link. So uh. there's further credibility, I guess. Anyway, the core counts and the stem and the little leaf attached to the stem and probably the worm <laughs> with a graduation hat on that I'm picturing in my head for some reason. <laughs> now, if we then assume that when they say basket, they mean a bushel, that's about 125 apples. So at 38 seconds a shot, how long is that, Mel's? That's like 79 minutes. Would you watch a guy eat apples for 79 minutes if you weren't also making use of a sex worker while you did it? Or would you get bored? <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't watch When it. this was happening, that was like high entertainment. You know, there wasn't a whole lot going on. It wasn't like, you know, there were concerts and, and like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's like, true, too. Yeah, but you know, over you an hour to watch somebody eat apples. I mean, like Katie has said, I guess if you're getting a handy hand shandy along with it, then. Yeah, what was your alternative? Like staring at a fire all night? Like <laughs> getting trampled by a horse? <laughs> watching your uncle die of cholera? Like... Oh. <laughs> Terrible. Dysentery? What a, what a wonderful time to be alive. Eat all those apples, and you're going to fucking get dysentery. I'm going to shit to death. Yep, there you go. That's another popular way to go. Yeah. Get a nasty infection from a splinter while you're threshing oh, wheat. God. <laughs> <laughs> fucking die just living. Ugh. Now that I think about it, standing still and reasonably okay, even if you're getting robbed by the rest of the people from the fuck circus. <laughs> Would be a pretty good deal <laughs> for 79 minutes in a row while Terare ate apples. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does any of this have to do with what he looked like? Yeah. Right. Right. That's what we were talking about. All right. Yeah. So you might be more interested in watching the show if, and I quote, he was described as having unusually soft, fair hair and an abnormally wide mouth, roughly four inches between his jaws when his mouth was fully extended, oh. in which his teeth were heavily stained and on which the lips were almost invisible. Jesus. And the skin of his cheeks was wrinkled and hung loosely. And when stretched out, he could hold 12 eggs or apples in his <sighs> mouth. So obviously... If he has 12 apples jammed in his fucking gob like a freaky chipmunk, you would be way more likely to watch, right? Yeah. And did you guys measure your mouths like I put in the chat? I did, and mine is one and a half. Yeah, mine's about mine, two. Mine's two. Yeah. His was four. Jesus. I mean, wait, did you say, did you say he ate snakes? Yes, he ate snakes. Well, and he's apparently like a his fucking mouth snake. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's mouth open like the grunge. I mean, I guess this is like you are what you eat type thing right here. Yes. <laughs> God damn it. In addition to his chubby cheeks, Terare apparently also had the following characteristics. When he had not eaten, his skin would hang so loosely that he could wrap the fold of skin from his abdomen around his waist. <gasps> What? When full, his abdomen was di would distend like a huge balloon. Now, so he's like a fat guy who who is gaining and losing weight, like as he eats. Yes, but only in his stomach, right? Because he's mm. eating like fucking hats. 
Right. And two like, by fours he, and shit. He blows up to the size of a guy and then he shrinks down to a guy like after he had like a gastric bypass or something. Yeah. It's like his body's going through that, but like in a day as opposed to like a year or whatever. That's like true. Crazy shit. But I'm not sure how realistic this is, especially the cheek part. But it seems like what someone would think would happen to a skinny guy who eats a lot, right? Yeah. But it doesn't make like a ton of sense. Because, I mean, maybe it does, but I would think that if the things that get affected by the eating get stretched out, his asshole must be, like, wide open. That is gross. I'm just, science isn't gross, Mel. That is not science. That is nonsense. Are you saying you don't believe in terrare? This is a fact-based show, ma'am. Well, I believe in terrare. She knows how to say it. But I don't believe that he had flappity fucking face skin because it got stretched from eating so many apples. <laughs> also, didn't you say apples or eggs? I mean, on what fucking planet are eggs and apples the same size? This is just goofy. <laughs> it's like saying a couple with a lot of kids must have a big old dick and a huge, huge like, crotch hanging. It's nonsense. <laughs> A very strong stance from Mel's on big old dicks. What is stupid? <laughs> like, I am not going to believe anything else about how he is some kind of stretchy doofus. <laughs> but I do, I do 100% believe he ate all the stuff they have said he ate, at least so far. Well, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like you have assailed the science of his flappy mouth skin <laughs> fairly well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey there, it's Acadia here, and my partner, Hannah Selector, is going to tell us a little bit about the show we do together. Do you like horror movies? Stephen King? Ranting and raving? Join us for a meeting of the Castle Rock Historical Society. Tuesdays, wherever you listen to podcasts. <laughs> All right, then. We'll get to... We'll get to what else he ate, but we also need to get to how he smelled. Odor is the tiebreaker of whether or not Bel Mel's believes in the legend of Terraria. Because we have stuffy eight, check. Flappity cheeks, uncheck. And now smell. All right. According to all accounts, oh. he fucking reeked. Should we? <laughs> I'm afraid to read this. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is from Wikipedia, and it is all footnoted. So we need to take it <laughs> as absolute truth. That's right. His body was hot to the touch, and he sweated heavily. He constantly had foul body odor. He was described as stinking to such a degree that he could not be endured within the distance of 20 paces. I'm going to assume that's like 60 feet or something. I don't know, I but suppose. you started this quote off like it was it's Fifty Shades far, of uh, Fifty Shades of Steak. There, his body was <laughs> hot to the touch. It's kind of this sexy. smell would get noticeably worse after he had eaten. His eyes and cheeks would become bloodshot. A visible vapor would rise from his body, and he would become lethargic. During which time he would belch noisily. And his jaws would make swallowing motions. What the fuck? <laughs> he had chronic diarrhea, which, is, <laughs> which was said to be fetid beyond all conception. <laughs> Despite his large intake of food, he did not appear either to vomit excessively or gain weight. By the way, but it just means smelling really unpleasant. I add that simple definition because the medical journals have to make things sound super fancy. Okay. Well, all right. So I legit believe it all except for the visible vapor. That <laughs> makes it nonsense. You try to tell me that he had cartoons. He had cartoon stink lines coming off him like Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I pictured it more as a heat shimmer, but yes, uh, you're probably right. Yeah. I have smelled some pretty rank things before, but none of them were visible. Right. <laughs> I think we're not giving medical journals of old enough credit. Sure, they may have made up some shit, but at least they were documenting things. Did you know B 
Bijou speaks of a porter or garçon at the Jardin des Plantes in Paris who was a prodigious glutton. He had eaten the body of a lion that had died of disease at the menagerie. He ate with avidity the most disgusting things to satiate his depraved appetite. He showed further signs of a perverted mind by classifying the animals of the menagerie according to the form of their excrement. Oh my God. Of which he had a collection. He had animal shit just sitting around? Ugh. Science! He died of indigestion (laughs) following a meal of eight pounds (sighs) of hot bread. (laughs) I learned that from the fucked up medical book you found. So let's just think about eight pounds of hot bread and leave the science (laughs) to the scientists, shall we? Yeah, why don't we start thinking about the new Strange Will Things band, eight pounds of hot bread. (laughs) (laughs) Eight pounds of different animal shit. Yes. Oh. It's disgusting. Mm, you can play, shit. <laughs> like it's play with flashcards. Oh. We just hold up a picture of the shit. Okay. Ostrich. <laughs> Ostrich turds. Got it. Very good. Possum. Possum We're just shit. About- <laughs> Possum. We're just about to get to the part where he almost uses his powers for good instead of evil. Well, as long as we agree that there is an element of foolishness in their accounts, we may proceed. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we can agree. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> the the medical journal biz was pretty cutthroat, so you had to spice it up a little. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, like he must have gotten tired. 50 days of stink there in the beginning. Right. <laughs> he must have gotten tired of eating frying pans and riverboats and shit while his buddies <laughs> robbed the townsfolk because he joined the French Revolutionary Army in 1792, so he would have been 20 at the time. Big surprise, the rations that soldiers get were not enough for old Shovel Face. He started doing other people's chores so he could get some of their food and shit like that because he was starving all the time. He even scavenged through trash piles to find stuff to eat. So it was not like he was eating this stuff just for fun. As far as he was concerned, he needed the food. Now... He got sent to the military hospital at Sol Hotreen and was granted four times as much food as anybody else got, but it still wasn't enough. He ate out of gutters and garbage cans and oh. snuck into the pharmacy to eat poultices. What the <laughs> Those are big things of gauze with the finest salves and bombs 1792 medicine had to oh. offer slathered oh. all over him. <laughs> like, oh. All right, listen. I, I might get down on my luck sometimes, but I'm not eating rolls of gauze. <laughs> You're going to eat gauze with like fish eggs and oh. and, and hot fat rubbed on them. But I guess this is, like being, this is like being a fucking vampire. Like, kind of. Just yeah, or at least Renfield. That eats, that eats by the hunger. instead of blood. Yeah. So a couple of medical officers, including Dr. Percy, got wind of Tarare and decided to run experiments on him. At first, they went easy. They set out a feast for 15 people and just let him loose on it just to see what he would do. And according to the 1819 book Polyphagism... Tarare! <laughs> Ate the entire meal of two large meat pies, plates of grease and salt, and four gallons of milk, then immediately fell asleep. He went to a food coma, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Core, core, I do that after eating a whole pizza. All right? Yeah. <laughs> Corville noted that Terrare's belly <laughs> became taut and inflated like a large balloon. Well, the idea of drinking that much milk is the grossest thing that's happened so far, and it's going to get worse. Gross. Four gallons of milk. And you know, since it was like 1790 that it was like fresh from the tit, hot. Yeah. It was was nice warm milk. (laughs) Fat flavor. No, I mean like. that's good drinking. 98.6 hot, not room temperature. (laughs) Mm, mm. Now, it's not long before the doctors, who are getting shit from the army that Terrari is not out there fighting, get an idea. What can you do with a guy who can eat anything that will help the army? Well, make him a messenger, of course. They put a <laughs> message in a box and had him eat the whole box. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> after, they, after they fished the box out of his shit, they were like, 
hey, the message is fine. <laughs> so Stop. a new secret messenger immune to searches was born. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> so he shit an entire box out? Yes. So well, his, I mean, I don't think it was so like his, a VCR box. <laughs> <laughs> so his butthole is wide. The box my What's TV came in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think of it more of the, like, I would picture along what they do for a passenger pigeon, you know, putting it on his leg. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think it was like a, a little crate that says, you know, ship to Antarctica and this end up on it. Okay. Well, I mean, we're talking about a man that ate a lion. Okay. Yeah, that's true. So... <laughs> So how'd that whole messenger thing work out? Well, let's take a survey before we find out, shall we? Mel, how do you think it turned out? Well, <laughs> I mean, what? I guess they've gone. <laughs> you think it was a know. good idea or a bad idea? <laughs> I'm indifferent on it whether it was a good or a bad idea. I just wouldn't want to be the person that was fishing that message out of this man's massive dumps. I can tell you yeah, that. Yeah, that's true, too. Shui, how do you think it worked out? I, I can't imagine it would work out well. You know, as a messenger, you're traveling a lot. You probably use up a lot of energy. You got to eat a lot. That's Who true. What this guy's eating on the way when he's got a, you know. So, <laughs> Road know signs. Know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> to celebrate the promotion, they gave Terrari a wheelbarrow full of 30 pounds of raw bull's lungs and liver. Which he, of course, ate while all the generals who just promoted him watched. He just ate 30 pounds of lungs and livers. Oh, my God. This is so gross. It's so disgusting. But despite his newfound status, they still sort of thought he was a fuckwit. So they decided to give him a practice spy mission to start him out. I assume they were afraid he'd be doing spy shit and get hungry and try to eat the rowboat he happened to be <laughs> in at the time. <laughs> so they gave him a message that basically said, did you get this message? But they told him it was a thing about troop movements that was to be given to a French colonel who had been captured by the Prussians. If he was captured, how was he going to get a message? Yeah, oh, no follow-up questions. Okay, hold no on. No follow-up questions. Oh, come on, I want to know. Wait. He's got to, okay, he's got to eat all this. He's got to get a message to somebody. I mean, what if he has to take a shit and he's not where he needs to be? Then he's got to eat it again. I think in 1792, wherever you were was where you needed to be. Oh, right, but it's to supposed to be, like, he's supposed to obviously take a big shit in front of a French colonel. Oh, that's true, right, too. It's not it is if he's not in his destination <laughs> yet. And he takes a dump on the way. I didn't really think about that. I mean, he needs to get those He's got to put it back in him. He's got to get those big black, like, leaf bags, trash bags to put his shit in and carry it with him. Uh, He's going to carry it around. Excuse me, sir. uh, What are you carrying? Uh, 30 pounds of shit? 30 pounds of shit that has a secret message in it. Leave me alone, Buster. <laughs> you want to By the way, it? that was me you smelled, not the bags of shit. <laughs> it smells pleasant compared to me. Oh, God. Can't you see these vapors? Now, the th- see my stink lines? It means I'm smelly. You should have seen that from way, way down the range. Now, oh. The thing that the French military seemed to have forgotten was that while he could shit out legible message boxes, he was still a country bumpkin whose only job up to that point had been eating and stealing. This lack of training bit him in the ass, no pun intended. He was supposed to cross the German line, so they dressed him up like a peasant. But since he didn't speak German, he was immediately caught (laughs) (laughs) and turned into the Prussians. Who either were or were not also the Germans. I really don't understand yeah, that. how that works. So he was interrogated, but he didn't talk. So they beat on him for a while, and it took him a whole 24 hours to crack, probably because he was so hungry. So once he told them the plan, they chained him to a shitter and they waited. <laughs> so now, at this point, we sort of had a have a choose-your-own-adventure. They both end up in the same place, but the route there takes one of two tracks because there are conflicting accounts. So, Mel's pick A or B? Uh, B. All right, B. In B, he shit out the message, but he caught it before... The Prussians did, and he re-ate it. 
<laughs> and then he showed him the shit, and he was like, "Hey, look, there's no message. I guess I was just kidding." Oh God, it's disgusting. <laughs> now, a sleight of hand. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously, a of fit, if you will. just like with a, oh. just like with a choose your own adventure book, you don't take your finger out of the choice page until you know whether the choice you made was good or bad. So if you go back oh, right. and pick A, then it was the Prussians found the shit message, and when they found out that it was basically, do you like me? Check this box. They got all mad because it wasn't really about troop movements. <laughs> God. So it ended up with them getting super pissed at him and stringing our hero Tarare up to be hanged. Oh. But at the last minute, the Prussian guy relented, beat the shit out of him and let him go, which sent him back to the French generals. And he didn't want to be an army man anymore because there was a lot of walking and getting beaten and almost being hanged. Yeah. So he begged Dr. Percy to cure him. So Dr. Percy made some tries. The attempts included giving him laudanum. <laughs> wine i don't <laughs> vinegar a fascinating product known as tobacco pills <laughs> i want to know more about that <laughs> right and apparently soft boiled eggs <laughs> oh. so surprisingly none of these worked and terrari kept sneaking out to eat trash and fight dogs and cats for scraps he snuck into the bloodletting room since that was a super popular treatment at oh. the time and drank the blood that got juiced out of people that were sick. This and he tried guy. to eat the corpses from the morgue, but apparently Ooh. he got caught. Oh, God. I'm now, sorry. Now it's just become absurd. I mean, well, it's how hungry are you? So. Some of the other doctors in the hospital were starting to think that this was a mental condition as opposed to physical. <laughs> what do you think? Oh. Well, <laughs> they wanted to send him to an asylum, but Dr. Percy wanted to keep him around to keep examining him. But the final straw was when a 14-month-old toddler disappeared from the <gasps> hospital, and everyone immediately suspected Tarare of eating oh, the delicious no. baby. Oh, how dare Please you say delicious? Tell me he would not. Oh. Yeah. It's not like they caught him holding a drumstick and picking his teeth with a rattle. Oh, my but God. He also didn't really deny it enough to their liking. So instead of sending him to an asylum or calling the cops, they just chased him out of the hospital and told him to never oh, come back. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my. So, uh. Picture that. You lose a baby in your hospital, and the first thing you think of is, Tarari must have eaten him. <laughs> and so you chase him out. Of, you just chase him out. You don't, like, put him under lock and key. You don't wait. You oh. wait for the box, the message box to come out, but you don't wait for the kid's, like, leg. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. So, we need to go back to the medical book for a second, and we can have Mel's do this one because it's the, it's the fucking worst. <laughs> Oh, oh okay. well, uh -huh. thanks. Okay, well, these are some of the things that the doctors documented him eating. Oh, God. Thanks a lot, asshead. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get through this. In the presence of the doctors, he seized a, oh, my God. He seized a live cat with his teeth, even traded it. Even traded it? Like, traded it on the market? <laughs> he sucked his blood and ate it leaving the bare oh. skeleton only okay so he is like a cartoon character like when they put the fish in their mouth and they pull out the bones yes that's impossible like he didn't he didn't eat the fur oh. well yeah but you just wait and even uh, like oh. eventration eventration is like squeeze them until they pop open <gasps> okay well oh. in about 30 Dude, minutes yeah, well, get ready for this. In about 30 minutes, he rejected the hairs in the manner of birds of prey and carnivorous animals. Oh, Jesus. Hairball. Hairballs. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm oh. sorry. He Okay, now this is where I draw the line. This fucker also ate dogs the same way? Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah, cats are fine. <laughs> Speciesist. Jesus. We already we already draw a line, and it's clearly at cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On one occasion, it was said that he swallowed a living eel without chewing it, 
Oh. But he had first bitten off its head. So that's just fucking great. Of course yeah. it's great. Why wouldn't you? Oh, my God. I, like, I wonder how big this eel was. If you bite oh. off the head, then it can't come back out. Because it doesn't know which way to go. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> this is the worst thing that I've ever had to sit through. <laughs> This is like, worse than autosarcophagy, for fuck's sake. This, yeah, at least they were their own terrible. victims. <laughs> yeah. At least you were eating yourself in that instance. Exactly. Oh, my God. That's some poor kitty. Oh, I know, that's sad. That's some poor doggy. Oh. Yeah, but it was also like the 1790s, so they probably didn't have it that great either. Yeah. I wonder if he ate a Great Dane, a Maine Coon. Uh, oh, I mean, I'm trying to think of the uh, biggest, like breeds of these a same well, one of those people ate a goddamn lion well he's <laughs> true That's he did right. a lion oh my god so, <clears throat> as hard as it might be to believe Terare was not the healthiest of fellows <laughs> Get out. in 1798 a doctor from Versailles contacted Dr. Percy saying that a dying patient wanted to see him and it was Terare he told Dr. Percy that he had eaten a golden fork a couple of years back and that if Dr. Percy would get it out, he'd be fine because that was the source of all his problems. Oh, my God. Dr. Percy, for his part, knew that Terare was a simpleton and that eating a golden fork would not give you, like, late-stage tuberculosis, which is what Terare had. I wonder how he got That's that. That's not primary cause. Yeah. Oh. Golden forks. And a month after that, he got even worse diarrhea, like the rankest diarrhea you could imagine. He'd always had the shits his whole life, and it was always putrid, but this was worse. (laughs) And finally, the poor bastard died. I'm sorry. Now we get to hear about the autopsy. (laughs) Who thinks that's going to be pleasant? (laughs) Absolutely no fucking person who listens to this podcast for the rest of time. (laughs) Ah, Correct. And apparently the stink that poured out of him when he finally died almost made the doctors have to stop doing anything and leave. 18th century doctors. How bad must things have been to gross those sick bastards out? And here's – so shout out to friend of the show, I'll just say M, who told me a story about a person that – got found after they had passed away in like a, it, it, at their own home, a, an elderly person. And apparently they had had a sore on their back oh. that had eaten all the way through to their spine and their spine was visible, but it didn't kill them for like a long time. Oh no. And that was now. That's terrible. So think about what you had to deal with in the 18th century and Terare smelled worse than all of it. Oh, so yeah. give us give us the roll that beautiful bean autopsy Dude. footage, Chewy. The entrails were putrefied, confounded together, and immersed in pus. The liver was excessively large, void of consistence, and in a putrescent state. The gallbladder was of considerable magnitude. The stomach in a lax state and having ulcerated patches dispersed about it covered almost the whole of the abdominal region. That is fucking great. Ugh. Well, my another journal, my favorite one, says... Oh, great. Me again? Ah! Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, he died of a purulent diarrhea. All his intestines and peritoneum... Oh come on, peritoneum. peritoneum. Yeah, that's the that's the taint, right? I think. Like taint your balls, taint your ass. Yeah, I know. I think it. Is. I think you're right. No, that's the peritoneum. I don't know. Anyways, this peritoneum being in a superating condition. Okay, superating means all. Oh Jesus Christ! All festering oh. with pus. In case anybody mm. wanted to barf there. What's purulent diarrhea? Like you don't know. <laughs> like you don't get it every Friday night or something. <laughs> P- 
purulent means discharging pus. So that's just fucking lovely. And I might be. God, I hate you, Acadia. I hate you forever. I looked it up beforehand, but I really wanted you to have to say it. (laughs) So the other interesting account of the autopsy was... Terare's gullet was found to be abnormally wide, and when his jaws were opened, surgeons could see down a broad canal into the stomach. His body was found to be filled with pus. His liver and gallbladder were abnormally large, and his stomach was enormous, covered in ulcers, and filling out most of his abdominal cavity. So it was another way for them to do what the first guy said, but more concise and talk about you could see all the way to in his stomach when you looked into his mouth. Mm. Now... Dr. Percy never found the golden fork, which means that Terare shit so much that he shit out a golden fork and didn't even know it. Uh. So now let that run through your mind for a minute. That'd be like shitting out a spur or a piece of coral or a sheriff's badge. I'm trying to think of how fucked up his asshole must have been. You leave it with the poor man's (laughs) asshole. (laughs) Fine. I guess you hate learning. So. Oh. I have I have a, a a theory about the smell of terrare. <laughs> Great. I can't wait for this. Well, so if his insides were all pus Ugh. and everybody knows that that smells rank. It said that it got worse after he ate. So every time he ate stuff, he was just mixing up heh, all the pus and goo oh. in his eh. <laughs> <laughs> So so no wonder it stunk because it was probably his breath because he was he, he was <laughs> hairball suey. <laughs> oh. oh my I'm god! I'm trying to be scientific here. Stop ruining it. Oh. So that's why I think he smelled so bad. It's because his insides were a runny mess. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, he's rotting from the inside out. Yep. <sighs> If only he had stayed with the fuck circus. I think it all went wrong when he went to the army. It all went downhill. I went to the shitter. Because, to be fair, when he was at the circus, all he was eating was apples. Oh, yeah. Lee. A lot of vitamin A, a lot of, you know, he taking hmm. care of himself. Apples and snakes. Oh, see, oh, snake, apple, apples. Garden of Eden. Hey, he had it all going. Ew. They could put a little morality play in the, in the show if they wanted. <laughs> Do not eat from the forbidden tree. Too late. <laughs> Do not talk to the snake. Ate it. <laughs> he probably ate God, even Too though he's invisible. Too many every animal. Not anymore. Probably. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he fucked up, Noah. He ate oh. the arm. Where's the unicorns? <laughs> ate them. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Terare, you crazy nut. All right. Eating masonry and shit like that. I just, I mean, this. I don't know how you. I don't even know anymore. I'm questioning existing at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Well, at least, at least it was in a time where there was nothing to do that could make him feel any better whatsoever, the poor fucker. Oh, gosh. I mean, he didn't even have tums. Nope, nothing. He probably well, just ate for tums, like eating like a like a ten pound block of chalk or something. Yes, yeah. so right out of the right out of the ground. He just <laughs> went right. to a mine. <laughs> oh, this poor guy. He's acting up. Oh, that is- <laughs> <laughs> it's repeating on me. Oh, Jesus. oh boy. Oh. Stay away, kids. I still want to know if he ate that toddler, though. <laughs> oh. oh, that was the lowest point of this whole story. I'm going to be Those honest. He's a good eating, though, huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Veal. <laughs> Veal. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. Oh, we're going to hell. All right. Yeah. You got to chaw the baby fat. You gotta get it to render. All right. We're really gonna be. All right. Well, if you'd like to reach out to us on the internet and you to complain, obviously. Disgusting (laughs) story. You can get him at Acadia on Twitter. 
and at Acadia Einstein on Instagram. You can reach out to Mel's on Twitter at Mel'sBells84 and on Instagram at SuperficialMel's. And you can reach out to me if you don't want to ever hear back at <laughs> Shoe Time. You don't even know, you don't even have Twitter on your phone, do you? I do. <laughs> do you have notifications? Now. Here's a little bonus bonus coverage. I'm checking it now. <laughs> oh, God. Checking my well, Twitter. if you would like to rate and review us after this, then <laughs> I would say go easy on us because it's all Acadia's fault. But. Hell yeah. You can throw us a couple of stars and let us know how you feel about it. And then you could also just get with Acadia because he's the one that came up with this shit. <laughs> yep. Well, I should think it would get more stars than that because it was informative. The, the whole, the hook line of the show is making stuff you didn't want to know fun to learn, right? What was is fun that still about our that? Thing? Yeah, it's, it's the fun part of eating cats. I don't know. Dogs. Oh, like, what's the fun part of his taint was bulbous with pus? I mean, give me a break. Oh. Well, I guess with the distance of time, it becomes a little fun. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> if uh, if if you were so turned on by this episode oh. that you want to support us in a in a more <laughs> robust way you can go to patreon.com slash strangeful and uh donate and what that would do is make it so that the scripts come in on time so that i don't have to come up with terrare ones oh, to torture oh, the the rest the rest of the cast with that <laughs> what a dick. hey you did this all on your own Katie. don't try to put this off on us no that yeah. is true i did i did but you know what's funny uh, uh, by the way, you can also catch Mel's on the Damn Fine TV podcast, uh, and you can catch Shuey uh, in his office, in my office, not doing anything to do with the show whatsoever. And yeah. you can hear me on the Castle Rock Historical Society with Hannah Selector. And when I brought this up to her last night that I was working on it, I just said, oh, yeah, there's this guy that could eat also. And she went, Terrare? <laughs> oh, God. She just knew right off the top of her head. Wow, she's troubled. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, that's patreon.com slash strangeful, and you get chill time. And, and I almost, since the episode went up early last week, I almost put it on the Patreon the night before. But then I went, oh, that's so much work. So I didn't do it. Well, count your blessings that you're not terrare. <laughs> Keep on flapping. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.